competition due to fast growth in textile sectors in other developing countries such as Vietnam and Myanmar. Uh, and also uh, the uh, product uh, diversification and deepening of value chains in competing uh, regions and correspondingly a shift in global sourcing patterns and value chains. And also lastly, the emergence of technological advances and new sources of productivity gains, such as automations and shift away from labor intensive production processes and also the emergence of e-commerce. Adding to these challenges are the disruptions to supply chains caused by COVID-19. Uh, some of the negative impacts on trade due to the pandemic could last for several years to come. The threats to TNG sector are, com uh, are a common issue for South Asian countries, not just limited to graduating LDCs. Uh, traditionally, this sector is prominent in other countries, including India, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. This has prompted us to examine issues related to the TNG sector in a sub-regional context. Another uh, factor that calls for, sub, uh, for a sub-regional approach is the possibility of forming regional value chains. Uh, regional value chains and production networks where the final product emerges from South Asia are likely to have better competitive value in terms of price and quality. Uh, RVCs uh, can contribute to greater efficiency gains, product sophistication uh, that can sustain South Asia's uh, global market share. The papers uh, which are being presented today were commissioned by UNSCAP uh, with these issues in mind. Their objective is to assist policymakers and private sector uh, in the sub-region to, uh, to make evidence-based and informed decisions and to prepare the TNG sector uh, in meeting the challenges ahead and to explore the opportunities and create new regional value chains in the TNG sector in South Asia. While the first paper examines the potential of forming RBCs in the TNG sector in South Asia. The second paper explores reform requirements from the global market perspective. Together, they offer many important observations and policy recommendations. These papers will benefit from expert reviews and comments. The objective of today's expert group meeting is therefore to review these papers and to provide insights into improving their contents and policy recommendations. Based on your comments, we will revise the papers and use them to develop policy advice and other technical assistance products for countries of the subregion. I thank all participants, uh, especially the authors of the papers and the panelists for contributing to this meeting. And also, I wish you all fruitful deliberations. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Adnan Saab. Thank you very much uh, for your opening remarks. Uh, without uh, much uh, wasting of the time, we will straight away go for the panel discussion. We have eminent uh, experts who have been working, uh, but let me uh, just go one by one. We will have first two presentations from our consultants, uh, Dr. Dinesh Kumar uh, and uh, Dr. Mustafi Rahman uh, with uh, his colleague, Dr. Khandkar Golam Moza. Uh, after uh, these presentations, we'll go for uh, the comments from the panel uh, and I will introduce them one by one. So first of all, let me invite uh, Dr. Dinesh Kumar for his presentation. Dinesh, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Ratna, sir. And good afternoon, everyone. Let me just share.
Uh, Dinesh, are you able to yeah. share your screen? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. You can see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, the title of the study uh, dev uh, is uh, Developing Regional Value Chains in Textile and Clothing Sector, a Regional Trade Perspective. In this study, uh, basically we have tried how RVCs could be built and strengthened in SARC region. First of all, I want to highlight, as Adnani sir has also highlighted, the twin challenges of SARC region. The first of all, First one is that, uh, that uh, in few years, Bangladesh, Nepal and Bhutan will graduate from LDCs and which could in turn result uh, in loss of comparative advantage. And the second major issue is, uh, is, is that the South Asia region is facing uh, stiff competition from China, Vietnam, Thailand and other East Asian countries, uh, in, uh, particularly in textile and clothing sector. Now I want to highlight few global developments which are going to drive uh, 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 drive the uh, 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 regional value chains and global production network in near futures like COVID-19, uh, trade wars between China and India, China and US, economic nationalism and fourth industrial revolution. As we already know that how COVID-19 has disrupted trade and global value chains and it is being anticipated and also highlighted by world investment report that there will be decline in globalization and relative strengthening of regional value chains to attain self-reliance and resilience and it is also being anticipated that several firms would shift their production base from china to reduce dependence on single country and there are other channels channels which are going to drive uh, global production networks are economic nationalism and sustainability uh, and uh, fourth industrial revolution. Uh, the World Bank Investment Report 2018 point, pointed out that uh, around 100 economies uh, which account for 90% of the GDP has formally adopted industrial policies after global financial crisis. This is with regard to economic nationalism. Re uh, reasons for re uh, reconfiguration of international production are different in different group of uh, countries. Developing con developed countries are going to attain regional strategic autonomy while develop developing countries are, are, uh, are going to uh, uh, improve their development of the region. In this regard, the context of the study is how the twin challenges of the SARC region can be can be uh, resolved. So uh, the study study proposes that uh, one of the possible solution could be uh, by building a potential regional uh, supply chain in textile and clothing. From the experience of uh, uh, ASEAN countries in relation to regional value chains and global value chains, we already know that how much potential it has in uh, uh, raising productivity label, bringing down the cost of production and overall development of the region and the country. Uh, now I want to highlight briefly the emerging current emerging trends in the textile and clothing. The textile and clothing is one of the vital industries for all the countries in the uh, in the region and uh, uh, which can be seen from uh, countries uh, share uh, countries share in their in it uh, their in their uh, global exports 90 uh, bangladesh uh, uh, in textile contribute almost 91% in bangladesh exports pakistan in pakistan 59% sri lanka 49% and the share of sark region has increased in this sector from 7.9% 7, 7 in 2000 to 13.5% uh, in 2019, uh, almost uh, reach almost nine, 97 billion USD. Uh, Sark region mainly exports finished product as uh, it accounts 81% share. Bangladesh and India are the major exporter of textile and clothing as they two, uh, together account almost 80% share of SARC exports in textile and clothing. In imports, uh, SARC region uh, 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 in textile and clothing imports 
share has increased from about 1.6% to 4% indicating rising demand in the uh, reason for textile clothing uh, reason basically imports uh, inputs uh, of textile and clothing and uh, in relation to imports uh, uh, bangladesh and india are again two major importers of the reason with almost three fourth share in intra uh, intra regional uh, imports uh, mercantile imports currently uh, lies between 5 to 6% while in textile clothing it is 20% but it it is important to note uh, that it was 23% in 2015 uh, it is basically uh, mainly because of bangladesh and pakistan uh, uh, decline in intra regional import from the sark region it has declined uh, we in order to check uh, in order to test whether uh, there is a possibility of regional supply chains we have uh, calculated estimated intra industry trade so uh, basic, uh, here the graph uh, 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 tells us that reason is fairly integrated uh, and uh, mainly nepal and pakistan have high intra regional uh, uh, intra industry trade uh, in even in fabric raw fibers and others have uh, others have fair amount of so which basically iit basically indicate that the possibility uh, of, of building regional supply chains as countries are fairly interdependent and having the complementary complementary in this uh, uh, industry uh, in order to uh, for this uh, developing uh, building regional value chains we have used comtrade database of weights and for bhutan we have uh, used uh, bhutan trade statistic uh, using USDA ERS production classification, we have uh, segregated uh, uh, chapters from 50 to 63 into various product group like clothing, home furnishing, industrial products, fabrics, raw fibers, yarn, textile machinery, uh, uh, which uh, uh, which falls from 84 chapter to uh, within 84 chapter. Uh, and further, we have se segregated these product groups into finished products and inputs. And for identifying potential products, we have used CTB and po uh, POS index, and we have used a strict criteria. That is, both CTB and POS should be greater uh, than zero. Uh, the C uh, CTB and PO index has uh, uh, had has added ad advantage over the Balasa index as it take care of intra industry trade by taking into account import data. Regional value chains are identified uh, using export and import data. We have, as I have already to, uh, 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 point out, that we have identified uh, a, a potential uh, uh, outputs and inputs using C, uh, POS uh, index in which reason has demand for regional supply chains. We have also identified list of inputs that can be sourced from the reason at, the, at a lower cost. Currently, these inputs are being sourced from the outside the reason at a higher cost. Lastly, we have identified investment potential inputs and output where country has a export potential and there is a re there is a demand in the region but there is a lack of supply capacity uh, so therefore we have identified three lists for each country uh, the first list uh, is potential finished products uh, in total we have identified 172 products uh, for for the reason and these products further divided into uh, 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 into products for uh, global exports and products for regional exports. For uh, regional exports, uh, where the region has a demand, uh, 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 we have identified 468 products. Maximum number of products are identified for Pakistan, followed by Sri Lanka. Uh, in la second last column uh, of this table we have also identified unique products unique products uh, are those in which only one country has a comparative advantage in the products in total we have identified 29 products and uh, maximum number of products are identified for the in, uh, uh, for india uh, 
uh, in potential products uh, in, uh, in, uh, including inputs as well uh, intra regional exports could further be increased by 1.7 billion given the existing supply capacity within the region india could india exports could be increased by maximum amount and followed by pakistan sri lanka bangladesh uh, list second is low cost inputs for the regional supply chains uh, in total we have identified 447 uh, 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 low cost inputs which countries can import from the region at a lower cost uh, maximum no number of products low cost inputs again identified uh, maximally for pakistan followed by uh, 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 sri lanka maldives india uh, from sourcing these low cost inputs from the sark region uh, nepal can bring down cost uh, of inputs by by 1.8 billion usd pakistan 1.1 uh, 1. 1 billion usd similarly for others uh, list third is the investment potential in which uh, there is a requirement for the investment but the, uh, because there is a lack of supply capacity in the region and but country has a export potential in total we have identified 223 uh, export potential and maximum number of export potential are identified for india followed by pakistan sri lanka and uh, uh, there uh, in this identified it investment potential there exists lack of supply capacity of about 7.5 billion usd in the safta region so uh, so a uh, study have also uh, identified what are the policy measures required for strengthening rvc in the sark region there is a scope of further tariff liberalization uh, as uh, as countries are still charging uh, uh, tariff even on uh, inputs uh, sri lanka imposes considerably low amount of tariff within the region but other countries are still charging a tariff so there is a scope also there is a scope of pruning the sensitive list particularly in regards to tech, uh, inputs of textile clothing uh, bangladesh has uh, 150 uh, 158 uh, the sensitive products belonging to fabric similarly for nepal 161 pakistan has 42 fabric products in the sensitive list uh, there is also a scope of uh, there uh, there is another issue of non tariff barriers in total we have uh, uh, 155 ntbs are imposed on mfn basis and 13 are bilateral export related measures imported by the sark region there is huge scope of uh, improving trade facilitation uh, using <coughs> using un cap uh, database we have found that sark countries have to incur considerable ad volume uh, additional ad volume equivalent trade cost when compared to trade cost involved in trading manufacturing with other countries outside the region there is uh, another major issue uh, uh, which study have found, found is relation to fdi region won't be able to amount significant of FDI when compared to other important reason it only able to attract 3.6 percent of uh, of global FDI in 2019 this is due to less favorable business environment in the SARC region in compare when compared to other reason is reflected by GCI uh, global competitive index logistic index and ease of doing index uh, in past few years india's position have improved significantly as a result of various policy measures undertaken to improve the business environment and infrastructure and even during the covid 19 it has able to uh, uh, able to attract significant of uh, fdi uh, in the country uh, low uh, intra uh, intra regional investment is another major issue in this uh, 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 study has uh, identified only dollar 3.7 billion as of 2019 is uh, invested intra regionally and india is found to be major exp uh, investor with 80% uh, share followed by 
श्रीलंका लो प्रोडक्टिविटी इज अनदर इशू ड्यू टू ड्यू टू लार्ज नंबर ऑफ फॉर्म्स एंड अनफेबरेबल फेवरेबल बिजनेस एनवायरमेंट एज इन indicated by gci logistic uh, uh, and ease of doing index especially for the large firms have led to resource miss allocation and capacity capacity constraint the another issue which uh, study has identified is product development and lack of product development and sophistication this is due to low r&d expenditure per employee in all asian countries when compared to east europe and central asia and sri lanka and bangladesh are the two countries which are able to do some amount of product uh, uh, development and sophistication report, reported by uh, world bank study 2017 uh, thank you very much thank you dinesh uh, thank you for your uh, presentation uh, may i now invite dr mustafizur rahman uh, along with his uh, colleague uh, muazzam for uh, the the presentation mustafa is by the floor please yeah. rajan uh, thank you so much and uh, we uh, really appreciate the opportunity uh, that uh, has been uh, given to us to uh, uh, to to uh, study a very important uh, i think crucially important uh, sector uh, which is of uh, uh, you know heightened uh, uh, importance as we go forward and uh, i think after uh, dinesh's presentation i think there is an opportunity for us to go uh, seamlessly to uh, global factors of competitiveness which are emerging for for south asia and in that context obviously uh, south asian regional value chains will be very important uh in in terms of translating our competitive advantages into competitive advantage in the global market so i think that uh, our study uh, which is looking at uh, global market competitiveness as was uh, mentioned by adani um, you know, was is very important now uh, it, i i think that going forward uh, uh, the future will not be a, just a linear progression of the past the global competitiveness landscape is changing very fast and pandemic has also accelerated that we are seeing on the one hand as was rightly mentioned uh, at the beginning that three of uh, the four major uh, countries uh, five major countries which are involved in textile uh, business uh, bangladesh uh, uh, nepal and and also bhutan we are preparing for ldc graduation um, india and pakistan increasingly facing the competitiveness pressure from 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 countries like vietnam now uh, in future market uh, when uh, the graduating ldcs will our uh, will not have the preferential market access we will have to redesign our policies from market access driven competitiveness to productivity driven competitiveness and that's where the regional value chain also comes in uh, vietnam is coming up in a very in a, uh, a significant way in, in vietnam uh, european union fta will give it zero tariff access in the european market uh, um, uh, cptpp is giving it zero tariff access preferential access to the canadian market and the recently signed rcep will give vietnam competitive advantages and preferential market access in markets of china in japan in australia how do south asian countries uh, uh, you know restrategize so that we can compete with 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 with, with vietnam yes china share will be coming down but then who will be there is it only vietnam or south asian countries also can get into that so that's where the competitiveness you know debate and discourse and arguments uh, come in so uh, my colleague dr muazzam who has uh, uh, made the uh, um, uh, uh, the greater part of the contribution he will now uh, take us uh, through uh, some of the major elements in global uh, competitiveness that south asia will be facing and uh, and the policy uh, initiatives that we need to undertake in order to have more productivity 
in order to have more global participation strength uh, and and taking advantage of uh, of uh, the regional opportunities that that is that is emerging so i think that together our two presentations are, are uh, very important uh, uh, in terms of taking south asia forward in the in the coming uh, days and years mozam Thank you, Mr. Vizme. Uh, let me share the presentation with you. Can you see the presentation, Mr. Vizme? Yeah, we can yeah. see. Yes. Please proceed. Yeah, please. Okay. Now, uh, thank you. In fact, uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, words are not actually shown here. The studies are. Uh, undertaken for uh, the UNSCAP was mentioned below, but why I'm not sure why uh, it has been not shown there. But uh, as Dr. Mustafa has uh, mentioned, that uh, uh, this study uh, uh, is, I would say, uh, will largely supplement that uh, what we have just heard on the regional value chain on the TNG. But basically, it is it is it has taken a much more broader perspective. It will actually focus on the. Uh, threats and opportunities uh, from the perspective of global market opportunities, I think, which is very pertinent in the in the recent context as uh, the uh, uh, TNG of the South Asian countries are actually observing uh, different kinds of uh, uh, challenges uh, nowadays. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, over the years, uh, the competitiveness of the South Asian countries have have developed uh, under the multi-fiber arrangement, which was. Uh, provided quota system in 1974, and which was then replaced by the agreement on the textiles and clothing 1995, and the phased out of the multi-fiber arrangement 2005. Basically, what I what we like to mention here is that a preference-based uh, global competitiveness has emerged in 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 South Asia uh, in the textile and the garment sector which in these countries has very efficiently utilized over the last four decades and and uh, this has actually resulted um, uh, uh, very, uh, various kinds of technological upgradation process upgradation in the uh, textile and the garment sector uh, of these sectors uh, all, of course there are other challenges these countries also confronted in terms of the technology social labor gender and environmental point of view despite those challenges these countries have made considerable progress um, uh, over the last four decades but uh, um, keep that aside if we actually uh, um, uh, looking forward we are uh, seeing that uh, a number of new challenges are emerging and which may not actually um, uh, be able by these TNG countries with their uh, traditional way of competitive strength uh, to counter those those issues, as um, it is mentioned by uh, uh, Mr. Adnan uh, Ali that uh, that these are uh, the market pressure and the market competitiveness. Uh, the graduating LDCs have newer kinds of uh, of challenges. Then the consolidation of the market competition, particularly uh, with Vietnam. And the new technologies, e-commerce, and the digital platform-based marketing, where South Asia uh, is uh, is largely behind. And uh, finally, the uh, uh, finally the uh, uh, COVID-related pandemic and its uh, and the disruption in sourcing. So the uh, South Asian countries need to confront uh, uh, these challenges uh, in, in the coming uh, decades. I will not actually discuss much about uh, this generic structure, what we have already heard a little bit, just to mention two, three points here, which may have an implication later on. South Asian T TNG has developed as a domestic private investment oriented sector, and which is uh, largely absent, that AFDI is largely absent here, as we just heard, uh, where the competitiveness of other, uh, other countries of TNG in the Asia particularly Vietnam, Cambodia, uh, these are uh, uh, largely uh, driven by the FDI, where South Asia is found to be uh, behind. 
and uh, uh, we know it very well that it is a low end mass scale product based uh, industry uh, within the region um, but uh, within that some graduation happened uh, but at a very small scale uh, product development happened but that is still we found it at a low end mass scale products or low and medium and uh, branded products particularly we found in case of uh, uh, sri lanka uh, so, uh, um, but in case of textile, we found some more diversity um, uh, in, in the product base of South Asian countries. Uh, uh, but what is more important uh, and we observe is that regional countries are not necessarily dependent on, uh, on, on uh, within the region for uh, procuring the, the raw materials. And you see this table that uh, in, uh, in, in most of the textile and garment related products, they are dependent um, uh, uh, mainly of uh, outside the region uh, for, for those products. And there are basically various kinds of reason which we already heard and we, I will also discuss about that. And the region, um, intra-regional trade, if I uh, try to uh, locate that in which countries actually procure from uh, raw materials or finished products from the region, we found very smaller uh, segment of, of the presence of the intra-regional trade, particularly with India uh, uh, is a major exporter uh, for some of the textile and, uh, and fabric uh, for Bangladesh, uh, for Bhutan, Nepal and, and Sri Lanka. And for other countries, the, uh, the, the such inter-regional trade link is, is rather very low. So uh, the, the possibility, uh, so the current state of a regional um, um, market in terms of the sourcing of the raw materials or the mark, uh, finished products market is still at a very low level. Uh, and the compliance level of the region is also uh, found to be uh, behind uh, if we compare it with our competing countries in this table you see show China and Vietnam um, with uh, labor standards and environmental performance index we, uh, we show uh, South Asian countries um, along with uh, uh, other countries and the uh, performance is rather uh, poor. Um, though uh, uh, the, these regional countries have uh, strategized and plans for improvement of the TNG sector, but uh, in general, our understanding is that still the countries are actually strategizing, strategizing with their traditional uh, knowledge base of the sector and the traditional level of competitiveness, what is currently there. But our, our understanding is that this uh, traditional uh, level of competitiveness owned uh, adequate enough for the sector to, um, uh, to, uh, to sustain uh, for another decade, uh, if we are, uh, like to see this as a major contributor for this uh, region. And, uh, uh, and the policies like the eight five year plan in Bangladesh, Sri Lanka's policies um, for the textile and garment sector for upgradation of the products, India's policies for technology upgradation fund, and Pakistan's policy for uh, comprehensive package for the TNG value chain. Those are uh, we could be we could, we could mention. But uh, what is uh, also need to uh, uh, discuss in a little bit detail about the emerging challenges and what is uh, look like. One, um, and we have already have an understanding uh, 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 from the earlier uh, 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 deliberations, is that market competition basically arises uh, from rising cost of living um, as well as the, uh, the reduction of the preference margin because the uh, MFN tariff rates of major uh, countries, major uh, apparel exporting, uh, importing countries are being gradually uh, re uh, decelerating uh, so that the uh, uh, preference erosion has is happening and Bangladesh and the regional countries have uh, reduced, uh, have uh, lost their, mar uh, 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 slowly lo losing their market competitiveness um, uh, in the global market. Particularly, uh, we are discussing about Vietnam, uh, as it is already mentioned by uh, Pro uh, Professor Mustafi, is that how uh, Vietnam's new regional uh, and bilateral trade agreements with other regions and, and other countries, including uh, UK, uh, will, will be a, would be a major concern after the uh, major South Asian countries will graduate from the LDC category when these countries need to uh, need to uh, need to pay the duties while uh, vietnam at that time may not be required to pay the duty as much as these countries uh, require to um, there is another point here is that the product diversification is, is a is a major challenge um, in this context 
Um, and if you see the table, you notice that the top 10 products uh, uh, of, of the major three countries are gradually uh, taking the major share um, uh, from 43% to 75% in case of Bangladesh, in case of India as well, it has increasing. And in, in case of Sri Lanka also, we are observing that there is a, a growing concentration of uh, few products so that is a uh, that is also a, um, a major observation in this case that uh, this kinds of concentration um, is uh, is uh, somehow uh, not so much found in uh, other other countries like uh, uh, for example vietnam and and china their product basket is much more diversified vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis those of the uh, south asian countries the rising e-commerce is also an issue uh, we have already discussed but uh, this table uh, presents the ICT related preparedness uh, of South Asian countries and vis-a-vis -vis those of our competing countries. You may easily notice that where the South Asian countries ranks are and where the, our competing uh, countries are. So that uh, that also give an impression that uh, whether in the uh, coming days when the digital platform could be a major uh, source of, uh, of uh, export, um, uh, then uh, uh, how could we compete with the, with our competing countries uh, in this digital platform? Particularly, it is important to uh, mention that uh, this uh, under this uh, digital-based uh, marketing, the buyers, brands, and retailers are, are have a uh, specific specialization um, and have a spe some specific requirements in terms of the product varieties, uh, uh, in terms of the demand, fashion pattern, quality, and the delivery time. And uh, uh, this. Uh, this online-based marketing is highly uh, time-sensitive. Whether the South Asian countries, where in a good number of countries are landlocked countries, and uh, and their uh, uh, logistics uh, situation are not uh, very uh, uh, very good quality, so how whether they could actually compete uh, in this newer uh, version of uh, digital competitiveness in in the coming days. So that is an uh, important point to look at. Uh, also, the graduation uh, uh, graduation of some of the LDC countries of Asia, South Asia, particularly Bhutan, Bangladesh, and Nepal, uh, which will happen uh, by 2023 to 2026. This is also a, also a concern. Particularly, the, the important point is that after graduation, all these countries need to comply with the labor standards and human rights related uh, uh, um, standards, not only for the export oriented sector, but also for the other sectors. So whether these countries are, uh, are currently prepared for that. I know specifically Bangladesh uh, has not yet signed a, a core convention of ILO of minimum age of entry of the workers, while Nepal has uh, yet to sign a core convention of a workers' uh, a right to um, uh, 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 right to organize um, that convention has has not yet been signed by Nepal. So the, and other there are other uh, uh, right related co conventions are there. So the, these countries need to work uh, heavily um, uh, uh, for the post graduation phase. And we also know that the European Union is uh, going to change the new GSP rules um, uh, in June 2023. Uh, while the existing GSP rules are uh, stringent for uh, in terms of the rules of origin, so after while the new GSP we are not fully sure uh, what it would be, uh, uh, the, what sorts of message there were for the graduating LDCs. We think that the South Asian countries uh, uh, jointly work for uh, on this in this regard uh, and negotiate and discuss uh, regarding European GSP rules which are being uh, uh, coming forward. And the COVID pandemic related challenges, we all, all, all know it. What is more important, just one message here is that a new source of, uh, of, um, of a sourcing pattern we are observing uh, during this COVID pattern. One is the reshoring, uh, while the more closer locations are being preferred by the brand's buyers and also the uh, alternate source, uh, sourcing. So, uh, so the South Asian countries are sufferer of, ad, uh, of it, and we observe it in case of Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, uh, 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 that uh, the, uh, their share has declined uh, during this COVID pandemic period, vis-a-vis -vis those of China and Vietnam, uh, who has a better um, uh, situation, health, health and safety situation that time. Uh, and uh, there is some sort of reshoring and, um, uh, and uh, uh, an alternate sourcing uh, uh, pattern has emerged. From that point of view, um, uh, if those uh, challenges are there of some sort of an structural in nature, uh, currently uh, South Asia is actually built on its competitiveness uh, on a very narrow, uh, narrow space, I, uh, we would say. 
Um, if we actually compare the global pattern um, of uh, changes in the, uh, in the export of TNG, we observe that uh, gradually there is a deceleration of cotton-based uh, cotton products in the global demand market. Um, so uh, both the cotton-based raw materials um, as well as cotton-based products uh, has slowly, uh, their demands are slowly decelerating uh, while there is a rise of non-cotton-based raw materials and non-cotton-based uh, non products, man-made fiber, man-made uh, staple uh, fibers, um, then yarns, and then uh, the laminated textile fibers. Uh, the, then uh, uh, synthetic and polyester uh, fibers. So those kinds of products are increasingly uh, being demanded globally. But if we, if we explore that in the South Asia uh, uh, product basket and their production basket, we see that uh, you know, those kinds of um, non-cotton uh, uh, non based raw materials are not uh, is the not major uh, uh, products of South Asia, and also their export basket is also not um, uh, included those non-cotton based uh, uh, products so much. And uh, and as just uh, I mentioned that the cotton based yarn, fabric, and raw materials are the uh, the uh, main main items we are observing in case of South Asia, but there uh, there is a decline competitive advantage in case of the cotton-based uh, products in the global market. So we have to rethink about uh, this, uh, this, uh, this context uh, in, for, the coming, for the coming days. Compared to that, if we uh, look into the China and Vietnam, there has a large pool of raw materials, intermediate products, and finished products, and uh, they could easily supply uh, the, as per the buyer's uh, requirement and specification. Uh, and they have a good logistics uh, situation. And Vietnam is also doing good, um, and their FDI is also uh, quite robust in terms of attracting, uh, in terms of actually uh, supporting various kinds of uh, new uh, and diversified products uh, that, that is required. We have already heard about the tariff rates. I will not discuss it much, but it is true. If you just look into this China and Vietnam at the bottom and vis-a-vis -vis those of the South Asian countries, you will easily observe that term duties of South Asian countries is much higher um, uh, in some context compared to that that of the, uh, our competing countries. And non-tariff measures are also uh, in a, not in a good shape. Uh, uh, India has, uh, has a very large number of uh, sanitary, phytosanitary requirements, technical barriers to trade, and overall, this is quite high uh, for the South Asian region. Um, uh, logistics performance index, uh, you are also looking into that where our uh, country's position are, uh, except India um, uh, uh, and uh, to some extent Pakistan, other countries are way behind uh, in terms of the logistics performance index. Uh, though we discussed about various kinds of bilateral, sub-regional, the regional cooperation, but in effective sense, regional trade has not uh, uh, increased much. Uh, it is still at a very low level, less than 5% of the global trade. So we could easily imagine that uh, interregional trade has not yet actually uh, gone up. Though discussion on uh, BIMSTEC FTA, uh, the BCIM economic corridor, BBIM economic cooperation, those are under discussion and consultation, but we haven't yet actually get much from those discussions. But rather bilateral level, some of the things are uh, more operational. India, Sri Lanka, India, Nepal, India, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, some sorts of, uh, of uh, trade agreements are there. While uh, India has a an, uh, an bilateral agreement with ASEAN, um, it is a started negotiation with European Union and has already had a preferential trade agreement with Mercosur countries. What is the message here is that, um, that uh, 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 within the region, there is a, some sorts of a competition uh, may emerge in the coming uh, coming years while India will uh, uh, be able to develop uh, its bilateral uh, negotiation and, and can sign FTA with other countries while other uh, regional countries may have uh, yet to uh, join in the, in the major markets like European Union, uh, uh, then um, uh, Mercosur or ASEAN countries. And, uh, and China and Vietnam doesn't uh, need to mention much. ASEAN and ASEAN plus three countries, Vietnam is there, China is there, uh, European Vietnam uh, Agreement, uh, UK's uh, bilateral FTA, CPTPP, uh, just mentioned by Professor Mustafiz, Marcus's uh, FTA with Vietnam, those are all already giving them comparative advantage. Uh, but uh, despite that, uh, uh, in, in other areas, technology and skill development point of view, we also see that uh, South Asian countries are, uh, are not in a, in a good position. 
uh, that ICT adoption or sk future skill requirement. Uh, we are uh, behind uh, with our competitor countries. Uh, uh, our labor productivity point of view, uh, it is the, the other countries, uh, competing countries are in a better shape. Their growth is also, is also uh, um, uh, uh, more compared to those of the South Asian countries. Uh, one thing that is important to mention here is that female employment could be an issue uh, uh, with with the uh, with the future um, uh, 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 future growth of the textile garment sector if it is more of a te technology driven um, if it is more on a digital um, uh, technology or or for II based driven whether female employment segment in the textile garment sector will reduce uh, or not uh, there is an, a strong apprehension that it will gradually reduce uh, in the coming days. Safety issue would be a major issue in the coming days uh, because particularly in European market access issues, uh, worker rights uh, uh, point of view, workplace safety would be a major point of view. What is the advantage of South Asia? Is there low minimum wage um, compared to that of the South, uh, other Southeast Asia and uh, yeah, other East Asian countries? But if we compare it with the productivity, uh, low productivity issue, then we can easily imagine that uh, this uh, low wage uh, issue won't actually provide much benefit uh, to these countries. And the labor rights issues are also you know, in, in a challenging situation of, uh, for major South Asian countries, uh, except India, uh, is, it is in a better position. Partly Pakistan is in a, in a better position, but Bangladesh and uh, Sri Lanka need to improve that. So from that point of view, if we just to now uh, locate this uh, um, this uh, current scenario with the uh, with the upcoming competitive ch challenges, what we not uh, notice here is that uh, already there is uh, um, there is structural barriers now uh, uh, prevail uh, of, uh, in the South Asian countries, and this would rather further narrow down the competitive age that the, the South Asian countries currently prevail, uh, and, and because of this rising competition. So that is an important thing to consider. It's a, a narrow product basket is all uh, is, will also be a concern uh, unless it is actually uh, be able to diversify its product base with non cotton based uh, product market um, and also the rising e commerce issue. Uh, 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 if it is not investing there, um, uh, uh, that may also lift uh, the, uh, this uh, this country is a part of the pie uh, from the global uh, apparel market. So uh, uh, will rather further intensify its challenges. And the, and the graduating LDCs will also uh, will will further face the challenges of loss of uh, market preferences um, and the erosion. So, uh, with uh, additional uh, uh, structural challenges we have discussed, and further narrow down their uh, competitive age there, um, and and also. So the COVID-related pandemic uh, issue also weaken a, a good number of, uh, of factories of major of these countries, particularly small-scale factories of, of major of these countries are suffering a lot and still not yet recovered from this process. So if the, uh, under this backdrop, if we just discuss my last two slides on the policy recommendation, what we like to actually mention here is that, uh, as Professor Nusaf has also mentioned, that we have to, uh, we, we need a major shift um, uh, in the textile and garment sector from the perspective of a, preference, a preferential market access based competitiveness. Uh, and that need to be uh, changed into productivity and efficiency driven competitiveness. So we need to actually build that kinds of competitiveness here. And for that new technology is uh, obvious and new technological practice is very, very needed. And uh, in order to attract those new technologies and new practice and to attract the businesses towards that, I think the incentive package, what is currently prevailed, need to be major uh, shift needed there. Um, uh, for all these uh, South Asian countries, which are currently catering to the traditional markets, traditional products, but need to have a new kinds of products, new kinds of technologies to be attracted uh, through the, with the incentive package. Product upgrading, as we just mentioned, a new institutional and new fiscal incentives package is required, particularly for the uh, new products. It, uh, one of the major observation here is that South Asian um, manufacturers have a complacency of their existing level of, of, of competitiveness, and they are not very enthusiastic about a major jump um, in, the, in the product segment, of the, in the uh, product upgrading or in the functional upgrading point of view. No, they are only focusing on the process upgrading point of view. For that, I think it is very important to attract FDI, uh, and that, that is very, very important. 
And China is gradually uh, shifting from the low end product basket. And China is also, uh, in, uh, and because of the geopolitical reason, investments uh, in, in China is also shifting to other locations. South Asia has a, a good potential to attract those FDIs uh, in this region. The third point is that social upgradation is very, very important, will be very, very important in the coming days. Worker rights issues, living wage issues, disemployment issues, workplace safety security issues will need to be very much of a priority concern, not only to the technology and the process upgrading, but also to the social upgrading, gender upgrading will be a major concern for the coming decades. So, so uh, yeah, investors, manufacturers in, need to invest there. Then it is the uh, infrastructure development, digital platform uh, investment will be required. We know that uh, yes, uh, India, uh, to some extent, uh, is ahead. Uh, Sri Lanka to, uh, is there partly, but other countries need to invest there uh, for the digital platform. Uh, and also in, at the enterprise level, there is a, there is a need uh, for significant in, uh, investment for, uh, um, uh, for uh, digital related uh, technologies uh, in order to uh, 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 link with the uh, online based uh, uh, buyers and, and suppliers uh, on buyers and brands. South Asian countries need to uh, consider assigning uh, FTAs and CPAs. We are observing that uh, India is well, well ahead vis-a-vis uh, -vis those of other countries, but uh, these uh, South Asian countries need to consider uh, the South Asia plus uh, related uh, uh, structure and the modality. Within South Asia, we may try, but definitely uh, South Asian countries need to uh, consider um, uh, beyond South Asia uh, in terms of uh, signing FTA and SEPA and uh, at bilateral and the regional level um, uh, in order to attract investment, in order to get um, low cost uh, raw materials and other facilities. And foreign direct investment will also be attracted within the production network. And also the regional suppliers and need to have a collective effort um, uh, in the post-COVID period. Particularly, there is a, 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 a objection from the supplier side that the, uh, the price has decelerating uh, while the target is, uh, is uh, rising. Um, and sourcing pattern has changed, just I discussed. So there is a joint effort needed that uh, South Asian countries should not be deprived because of the COVID challenges. And the, the, and the global pie uh, should have to be uh, retained to the, uh, uh, the uh, pre-COVID level. Uh, the distribution level should be a pre-COVID level as quick as possible. And um, these countries need to move up to the uh, fashion chain. Upmarket products uh, are there and they need to invest there for fashion designing uh, for that. Uh, taking the technological support, skill people, people support within the region and outside, they need to do that. And finally, um, now, uh, the South Asian countries jointly uh, take a voice um, in the upcoming um, uh, ministerial conference in the WTO uh, uh, MC12. Uh, and they should take a common stand in support of the demand for three graduating LDCs, Bangladesh, and Nepal, and Bhutan, to extend the preferential market access for a time-bound period of, uh, following the graduation, which is not yet fixed up, but I think uh, a, a post-graduation uh, uh, related and uh, uh, clear predict predictability about the market access uh, will definitely help these countries uh, to for uh, uh, ensuring smooth graduation. So uh, thank you for your uh, patient hearing. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mustafit and uh, Muazzam for your presentation. Uh, very well received. Uh, 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 yes, Adnan Saab, you, you, can, uh, you, you can leave. Thank you. We'll manage. Thank you for your time, uh, Adnan sir. Uh, so uh, after these presentations, we will now go for the comments from the panel, and I will invite them uh, one by one. Uh, we'll ask you to to focus on the presentations because we have already shared it with you. Uh, we would uh, look forward to your valuable comments on the existing studies, methodologies, finding. If you find there are certain gaps, if you find some points have been missed out, uh, we would be grateful to have your inputs uh, so that uh, we can uh, we can have uh, uh, you know these incorporated into it. Uh, okay, one more comment. I, one second, uh, Adnan Sab, are you there or left? Uh, Mr. Aliani is there or he has left? Okay, but uh, nonetheless, uh, okay, he has left. 
anyhow i have a, a, from my team a comment which has come uh, for everybody to open their camera we'll just uh, open everybody uh, your cameras all the panel and even otherwise those people who are there we'll just take one snap for our um, uh, you know uh, media coverage so uh, maybe i request everybody uh, subira is that all okay you can say one two three and we'll do cheese and take a shot okay uh, one two three yeah we're done thank huh? you oh you want more uh, okay thank you thank you so let's no, thank you so much. okay thank you let's go back i mean you can continue opening your video but just mute uh, so that we can hear the panel who will be speaking uh, in this regard let me uh, first of all uh, call uh, uh, chanchal chan sarkar uh, he is a director for economic trade and finance at the sarc secretariat uh, chanchal has a very vast experience of working uh, not only in sarc secretariat but uh, also in the government of india he was in ministry of commerce he was in ministry of finance he has uh, uh, negotiated international investment treaties and other frameworks uh, and uh, uh, one of the presentations have been also as to how uh, you know fdi uh, can be increased so chanchal uh, you have the floor please uh, well, one thing uh, excellency one thing uh, i would like to inform you that uh, i have my uh, another meeting and very soon i am uh, i am going to join over there but our honorable additional secretary mr abul kalam ndc is is uh, connected with you, all of you and uh, if you have any sort of squares later on he will be uh, able to uh, i think share everything so uh, and by this time i have as, as far i have enjoyed uh, three presentations at this and uh, we have come to know so many things uh, so uh, mr and all of my uh, dear participants panelists and and experts uh, i'd like to uh, convey my thanks and gratitude to all of you and i think i i, I have to leave uh, from this uh, 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 meeting so my additional secretary he will be uh, uh, joining with you and he will be doing everything needful thank you so much thank you thank you mr manan thank you very much for your time uh, and uh, uh, okay, we, no, no, we are no grateful for and, and we have we have enjoyed a lot especially cbd's presentations and dinesh kumar um, uh, he, he, he i think uh, he had made a very uh, important significant uh, a presentation it was and we have enjoyed a lot and we have got so many informations from you uh, regarding rmd and, and textile and uh, and rmd sectors in south asia thank you so much thank you thank you Manan. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Chanchal, you have the floor, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Carry on, carry on, please. Okay. Uh, uh, before I proceed, like uh, one small uh, clarification, uh, uh, Ratna sir, like uh, this is uh, 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 this this. Am I supposed to comment on both or like whichever or like? Uh, uh, you are you are you, you need to unmute yourself you can comment on both or you can comment on any one of those presentations feel free okay. thank you thank you very much yeah uh, uh, it was a, a pleasure listening both the presentation uh, very well uh, uh, presentation and congratulations to both uh, the uh, presenters in fact all the three uh, 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 yes, I, I would uh, slightly touch upon uh, on this uh, very very informative uh, uh, on the uh, value chain uh, one the first pre uh, presentation. It's a very very comprehensive. In fact, both the studies are very comprehensive, uh, comprehensive and very timely. I would congratulate uh, uh, SCAP for initiating uh, these two very very. Timely and appropriate uh, uh, studies and subject uh, selection, very very appropriate uh, in the uh, context of uh, South Asia's uh, uh, trade, overall trade, as well as uh, the devastations and the fundamental way the 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 
the the whole trading systems and other macroeconomic elements are getting uh, changed uh, due to covid and related uh, 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 forces uh, so now first one i find that this uh, value chain uh, thing is very very comprehensive particularly the identification of 1722 potential uh, products for regional and global market this the uh, both uh, input and uh, 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 finished product and country wise uh, segregation these gives a very ready made and uh, uh, kind of uh, scenario that helps government and other policy makers uh, taking informed decision and which direction to go, go ahead now uh, the the very fact uh, that that intra regional export and import the, the different difference that has been very well uh, uh, produced like while the exports uh, are 6% and the imports are 20% that gives the enormous uh, scope of uh, of 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 uh, uh, value chain development uh, in these areas uh, that is very well uh, brought out uh, and it, it also have spoken about the difficulties in the safta uh, safta yes yeah, and the south asian uh, trade uh, uh, this tariff uh, reduction and the sensitive list uh, reduction and the, the 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 need for the trade facilitation which cannot be uh, over emphasized uh, these uh, they have, it has also very well Uh, documented the the, the non tariff barriers and, and trade facility uh, issues it has also mentioned about the mfn uh, nt in, in non tariff measures and uh, number of uh, uh, this thing only and has shown that uh, only 13 uh, measures ntvs are are uh, based uh, not based on mfn so therefore uh see one uh, very important aspect we need to understand that that uh, mere mention of of non tariff barriers or measures uh, i mean uh, i mean do not uh, i mean or uh, necessarily form as a trade uh, barriers uh, it, i mean uh, as per the wto agreements uh, both sps and tbts members are free to uh, uh, adopt certain measures based on scientific uh, uh, principles and which are uh, as per the agreement uh, uh, so therefore like mere imposition does not necessarily mean as the trade barriers so therefore like if at all we need to work we need to further uh, point out like why these are ntbs and not NT ntms like you can say something like that non tariff measures not necessarily a barrier, barrier or so therefore we need to find out what where exactly those are now uh, here i also want to mention the other uh, 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 study by mr mustafizur and other uh, co-author uh, where i see that on the ntb uh, section uh, the data used are, are uh, i mean uh, information are a little bit Uh, older i have i have seen that uh, 2005 and 2011 12 uh, studies have been uh, used there uh, while they have also uh, referred to uh, uh, referred to the other uh, recent studies particularly the world bank studies of 2018 and 2020 so maybe uh, they could uh, update those uh, data on the the inform uh, non non tariff barriers uh, uh, section uh, uh, and also as i said that uh, it is not necessarily that numbers uh, mere mention uh, does not necessarily form as a barrier it has to be one needs to uh, uh, point out why it is not uh, ntb simply uh, mention is not uh, the thing now uh, on the issue of uh, uh, value chain again i i i uh, while they have mentioned about uh, the 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 number of uh, items and potential and then immediate gains 
uh, these are very very important aspect uh, uh, and also have given the uh, uh, you know that potential of more than one billion uh, dollar US dollar uh, gain can be uh, achieved. Uh, so therefore, like uh, the aspect of of need for value chain has been uh, clearly pointed out. Uh, the uh, only thing is uh, uh, that uh, perhaps uh, I'm not very sure like whether this, this has, uh, can be accommodated within this is uh, the kind of investment is required. If we if can be pointed out, this, this amount of investment is the minimum to, 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 to deal with the issues because if I understand uh, correctly, the basic purpose of this study, uh, both the studies, are like uh, to 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 deal uh, with the two challenges. One is uh, the uh, to remain competitive uh, on the backdrop of 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 the uh, uh, erosion of the preferential treatment, and uh, secondly, like uh, there, how you uh, become more uh, efficient uh, uh, in terms of. Uh, cost efficiency in other uh, social uh, uh, parameters and other uh, areas uh, because uh, there are a lot of FTAs are uh, going around and uh, and therefore like uh, these uh, tariffs across the board will come down so that uh, one aspect uh, and uh, then uh, very important uh, uh, issue. They have uh, the the other study, which I mean, Mr. Mustafizur and the co-author. Uh, they have pointed out uh, various aspects on the issue of uh, uh, this uh, uh, e-commerce would be a major factor. Then uh, uh, infrastructure, other infrastructures, and also the very interesting thing is that uh, work uh, female participation uh, like there is a twin challenge like uh, as it is the the the, the south asia uh, the work participation female work participation is relatively lower so now the question is that with progress of uh, diversification and new technologies uh, uh, there is a big challenge to 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 keep uh, women workforce uh, in business so therefore they, it would be very important uh, to point out how we can uh, ensure uh, that work uh, female participation uh, can be uh, well trained. I mean that the 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 and the the uh, skill development uh, aspects would be would be very very important. Like we we need to have a time bound uh, kind of uh, uh, target oriented. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, approach, if I don't know whether that can be uh, included. Also, in uh, uh, particularly... Chantal, value can you sum up now? Uh, okay. Okay. So, so uh, two points. Uh, I will sum uh, uh, This uh, uh, possibilities of new market, uh, that would be a very important uh, 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 addition. And one other things I just wanted to mention uh, on this uh, value chain uh, presentation, the first presentation, uh, is that as, as, a, as a first uh, glance, it appears there are too many uh, uh, figures and tables if the author can consider reducing a little bit. Otherwise, these are very good studies and I, I could enjoy, uh, enjoy bo uh, both the presenters and the studies. Thank you very much. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chanchal. I'm sorry I had to uh, to rush you. I know uh, you yourself is an economist and you have worked Thank for you. long. So, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, because maybe if time permits, we'll go for another round. Uh, uh, and uh, before that, we'll have to also give all the authors uh, time to uh, you know, to, to, to respond or uh, at the end. So we'll go, but let me now go to the next uh, panel speaker. He's Mr. Arshad Jamal. Uh, he is from Bangladesh. He's a vice 
president of BGMA uh, since 2019. Uh, he was also a chairman of the foreign mission cell of BGMEA. Uh, Mr. Zamal, uh, thank you. He is joining us from New York at a very odd time, but uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, welcome. Uh, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Rajan. Uh, thank you, everybody. I uh, first of all, I would say that you know the regional cooperation, particularly for this textile and garment, has become the issue now. And I will just focus on three three points. One is, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, just wanted to touch a little bit about uh, Dr. Dinesh. He has uh, given intra-regional trade is declining. Where I would say that you know we can do it in the other way around, like you know, focusing on the export basket, export market, we can do a more intra-regional cooperation, which I am I'm just coming up with that. And in that case, you know, I think the tariff is not a big issue because if the goal is to export, then you know, tariff is not an issue for within the region. And uh, from uh, CPD, Dr. Uh, uh, Mustafiz and uh, Muazzam, his uh, presentation. I just want to highlight point number six, where regional supply take collective effort, which I, as a denim manufacturer as well, I think we need to have a collective effort to do the product development. And the, obviously, you know, it was a very important point that what he has raised about the female participation which I also wanted to add on. <clears throat> what is happening in, uh, uh, in the global market? The competitiveness is not only price or product, uh, uh, you know, the R&D and all this. They are more focusing on sustainability. And in sustainability, in the regional, su sustainability, there are half of it is environment issues, like, you know, uh, water, energy chemicals and their sustainability and the 50 percent is social issue so where also you know region has limited resources region has a significant knowledge within the region we have to share the knowledge like for example in bangladesh you have seen you know Mahasim has also uh, mentioned that you know the domestic private investment is more so there are pros and cons in domestic private investment. In Bangladesh, for example, has really established, initial investment was started from the Koreans in this industry, but now these Bangladeshis are in the driving seat of this RMG industry, and they have become number two in the world. So within the limitation of knowledge, productivity, uh, product diversification, we still maintaining very strongly the reason is there is a lot of ad additional advantage. I have seen a lot of uh, investors want to do a joint venture with the local entrepreneurs instead of going directly to the export zones. So what is happening to the to overall management of this uh, textile and garments is a local knowledge for within the region. So we have to really quantify what is our advantage, what is our local knowledge within the RNG and textile to manage in this part of the world. And where I would say in the sustainability, we have to strategize that whether we will invest more on environment, which is very highly capital incentive, or we will go on the social side. In social side, I can tell you that wages are, of course, a ma major issue that we have to really justify the wage versus the productivity. We have to really see that how the female participation, the quality of the female participation, because in Bangladesh now the buyers are re really imposing that you know you at least have to have 30% of the supervisor level as a female participation. That you can't really manage because the woman doesn't get the incentive to go in the upper upper level of the management. So. These are the things we have to really have some certain incentive for the female. Otherwise, we are always talking about the gender equality. But these are low hanging fruits. Like, you know, we cannot invest much in the environment side. Every like 
greenhouse gas in uh, or fam or higgs whichever the index you know if you go everything is capital incentive every you know even for etps and the chemicals so we rather focus on the wages gender and the social issues about the products uh, development and innovation i have one thing to say about regionally as a jeans manufacturer i i see that you know we have very limited i'm one of the largest uh, fashion jeans manufacturer in bangladesh and i have experienced this thing that you know now more than 85% of the product the the raw material are been nominated by the foreign buyers so what happened that we could see that they are they are they are focusing on the region but in a very strategic manner so you know i could see sometimes they are really uh, taking the advantage of the cotton price in pakistan or taking the advantage of uh, uh, um, uh, environmental or sustainability thing in india and they take the fruit and they just ask us to convert it in bangladesh but we cannot really integrate this thing in the regionally in the value chain like you know we could get only the conversion cost from cm in bangladesh but you know if we had a product development and innovation cooperation between india pakistan and bangladesh bangladesh is a converting country pakistan is good in their their certain level of uh, certain weight of uh, denims as because i'm a denim manufacturer i'm talking I'll give an example of denim but india i could see there are few manufacturers particularly in the south part of india are not able to compete but when i go deeper inside i could see they are focusing more on sustainability because eventually tomorrow when there will be a ldc graduation in this uh, bangladesh nepal and bhutan there will be other things which we have to offer so there india is preparing in much much more better way but today they cannot really compete for example i i was surprised to see they have a, a denim manufacturer called kg denim in south of in, uh, india and they invested even to have a technical and innovation school for their own manufacturing they are focusing on sustainability so pak i would say you know that knowledge have to be shared within the pakistanis within the bangladeshis so as a whole the region will actually get benefited and in the supply chain management i would say you know post covid we have seen that this is still not well managed we still have one you know border to really cross the border we can we can we can have much more facilitation in the supply chain management within the region there are still there can be a regional uh, in 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 sea and in the land and also in the rail we have to see that how we can facilitate more supply chain particularly covid has given us a lesson that you know in a crisis we have seen we are failing because of the supply chain management so i would i would thank everybody and i would ask everybody to really focus on the product not only product development and innovation we would ask for the regional product specialization like whichever the product we are good we have to really focus we just don't get fear about vietnam and thailand and other countries so if we specialize and we cooperate i'm sure that you know we can figure out and we can uh, we can be much more competitive i am a bit uh, against product diversification because i could see that we still have lot more opportunity of whatever the product the region is producing we can specialize on that and then in the later stage you know we will focus on because you know if we really specialize in our existing product basket we will eventually be more competitive in a product diversification but i just don't want to do both at a time right now thank you so much thanks everybody thank you thank you thank you asha thank you very much and for some of your points touching upon knowledge sharing and this is very interesting on the some of the cases which you have cited Uh, as well as I about the want to say that you know we have to strategize you know particularly on product development product development cannot be done individually from india and sri lanka uh, pakistan i could see huge opportunity west is taking the advantage they are nominating 
they are doing the product development in Pakistan and take uh, copying it in Bangladesh, converting in somewhere else. So this is something you know, we have to take uh, do a good cooperation. There. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I have a request. I, I would jump the ladder a little bit and I will invite uh, Dr. Abid Suleri. He's the executive director of Sustainable Development Policy Institute, Pakistan, a well known figure in South Asia as well. Uh, he has to 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 leave. So, uh, uh, so Abid Bhai, you have the floor, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ratna and uh, Rajanji. And I'm extremely sorry for uh, uh, jumping the queue, but uh, it was such an important uh, topic that I didn't want to uh, leave without uh, paying my uh, gratitude as well as my congratulations to both the uh, authors of uh, the studies. Uh, and uh, especially, I can echo uh, the policy recommendations uh, that uh, was given by. Uh, Dr. Mustafizur Rahman and uh, Kundakarji, uh, their uh, uh, 12 points uh, uh, recommendations. Uh, the thing uh, perhaps where we need to have uh, more discussion is about uh, product diversification. <coughs> Ashadji very kindly gave us his practical experiences. So while the two authors, they were more focused on their theoretical experiences, uh, the practical person, he, he came up uh, with this uh, practical experiences and uh, gave us uh, the other side of story as well. I think perhaps we need to focus on uh, this uh, concept of uh, uh, moving niche and uh, moving fitness. So we know that uh, what was a niche yesterday, today it's no more a niche and we have to find uh, another niche and perhaps uh, where I can see uh, some sort of convergence of uh, uh, Mustafiz Bai's recommendation with Asha Saab's uh, recommendation. Uh, that uh, we have to identify our niche and uh, before that niche becomes extremely common, uh, we have to diversify it and find another uh, niche uh, so that we get uh, prepared for uh, tomorrow. Uh, but uh, uh, the most important uh, in all the uh, recommendation is that uh, these recommendations, they are not uh, defensive. They are actually uh, talking of preparedness. And I think uh, that's the spirit I like the most that instead of uh, uh, crying and instead of uh, painting a gloomy picture, uh, that what would happen once the three countries they would graduate or what would happen in case of uh, this uh, uh, global uh, competitiveness uh, they are very practical uh, recommendations uh, that are uh, telling us uh, that uh, we have to uh, focus on uh, product upgrading we have to uh, focus towards social upgradation we have to focus uh, about on a digital platform and promoting e-commerce which is again uh, uh, one of the least explored area in many of the south asian countries so while one can see this uh, digital uh, divide uh, among uh, South Asian uh, countries, uh, there are uh, many countries, uh, especially uh, in Pakistan, including uh, them, uh, Nepal, uh, Bhutan, uh, and to some extent uh, Bangladesh as well, which have to uh, still uh, put their footprints on uh, this e-commerce platforms on digital uh, platforms, and they can uh, actually uh, again uh, develop a niche over uh, there. Uh, when we are talking of signing uh, FTA and uh, 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 CPAS uh, with countries having a uh, trade potential. Uh, again, we need to uh, uh, see uh, the region uh, in uh, this uh, post withdrawal, uh, uh, this uh, Afghan uh, region, uh, where one can see convergence of uh, Chinese and Russian uh, interests. And uh, that would perhaps uh, open up if uh, there is a stability in Afghanistan, uh, that would open up uh, uh, the uh, huge uh, land route for South Asian countries to reach to Central Asian uh, countries. And again, uh, Pakistan's uh, uh, FTA with uh, China, and uh, that would uh, become uh, quite uh, handy uh, when we are uh, talking of uh, uh, taking uh, uh, advantages uh, in, with the uh, countries who have uh, uh, these uh, uh, FTAs. Uh, I 100% uh, agree uh, with the uh, Rashid uh, Jamal Sab, Rashid Jamal Sab on this uh, uh, regional uh, suppliers' collective efforts uh, in addressing uh, post-COVID challenge. Uh, I'm sure that uh, if uh, collectively uh, bargaining with the rest of the world, South Asian uh, suppliers, they can be uh, better off, and especially uh, amidst uh, uh, this uh, COVID, uh, this uh, collaboration to uh, move up uh, the fashion uh, chain. Uh, this is again uh, something uh, uh, which uh, perhaps South Asia as a region couldn't get benefit. Yes, some of the countries in South Asia, we uh, did, uh, we were able to uh, get benefit of uh, these, but uh, as a region, we couldn't get uh, 
uh, much benefit of it due to our uh, own regional uh, politics. But I think uh, there are certain things which need to go beyond uh, uh, this uh, politics. And I would strongly uh, recommend that if not on the forum of uh, SARC or SAPTA, uh, perhaps uh, these uh, regional suppliers and regional textile and garments players, they should have their own uh, organization, uh, which is uh, not uh, the SARC Chamber of Commerce. So it may be a sectoral organization uh, that can collectively uh, bargain uh, on behalf of uh, uh, the region and that, that can uh, collectively think how to uh, proceed uh, further, keeping most of these political differences uh, uh, aside. Uh, and uh, uh, solidarity at MC12, I think this is uh, something which goes beyond uh, uh, saying that uh, uh, the countries of uh, the region, uh, they should uh, take care of uh, our graduating uh, brethren uh, states, which are now uh, graduating uh, from LDCs uh, to uh, the developing countries, uh, that they should have some sort of pension market access uh, in a, a time-bound uh, period, maybe some uh, post-graduation period we are uh, talking of. We know that transition is always uh, difficult in post-transition. It's just like post-surgery care, post-operative care uh, that we uh, need to uh, emphasize uh, keeping our uh, differences uh, aside. So these were uh, some of my points. I'm sure that uh, uh, other uh, speaker from Pakistan, the CEO of uh, Gul Ahmed, uh, he would also be uh, presenting uh, his practical thoughts on this uh, subject. And uh, I look forward to uh, receive uh, the uh, soft copies of these studies for dissemination uh, in Pakistan. Thank you. Thank you, Ardai. Uh, uh, Mr. Ziad Bashir may not be able to attend because he, uh, his brother is traveling and he is held up in some meetings. So, but nonetheless, it's fine. Thank you for having your inputs, which are uh, very, very important. And definitely some of them will, uh, will be attended to. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, panelist uh, I am going to invite uh, is uh, Professor Rupa Chanda. Uh, she is another well-known figure in South Asia. Uh, she is a professor of economics at Indian Institute of Management in Bangalore. Currently the dean of program at the institute. Uh, she has worked as economist at the IMF and also was heading uh, this daily office of SCAP for some time and very soon uh, in in a, uh, in about 10 days or two weeks she would be joining as a director trade and uh, trade investment and innovation division in bangkok so uh, thank you rupa for uh, joining us and welcome uh, you have the floor please thank you Thank you very much, Rajan, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Let me start by congratulating both the authors of these papers. They're really a very good overview of the status of the textile and garment sector in the individual countries of South Asia, and they also outline very well the intra-regional status and prospects. Um, I think previous uh, discussions have talked about how comprehensive they are, so in the interest of time, I won't go into what all they cover. I'll just highlight a few issues which I think the papers perhaps could reflect on further or could add some more discussion on. Uh, so one of the points uh, made several times in the paper by Professor Rahman and uh, Mr. Moazem is about the scope to take advantage of integration uh, with regional production networks in Southeast Asia and the ASEAN region. Uh, for instance, I'll just quote, it says at one place, trade policy of South Asian countries need to take advantage of greater trade integration with East and Southeast Asia as a strategy to enhance competitiveness. Um, so for what does this really mean? What would such integration entail? Does it mean drawing FDI to South Asia from other regions for promoting exports from South Asian countries? Does it mean entering into bilaterals or regionals with Southeast Asia and East Asia? Uh, I presume a bit of it is this because at several points the paper mentions about the need to enter into agreements with other countries to offset disadvantages and the fact that India has a bit of an edge in this regard because it has such agreements. But I would actually question whether agreements will really help the South Asian countries integrate or develop regional value chains because countries like India do have agreements with ASEAN and bilaterals with many of these countries, but still they've not been successful in entering production networks in the region. Uh, why haven't they been able to leverage? Is it the design of the FTAs? Uh, so in that case, what kind of FTAs would we need in terms of sensitive lists, rules of origin, removal of NTVs, product coverage, etc.? cetera? Uh, and if it's not merely an issue of agreements, then obviously it's other challenges. 
So the larger question then that came to me repeatedly when I read the papers was whether the constraints are largely domestic in nature and to what extent they are about external challenges and the need for FTAs. So more generally, I feel maybe some more discussion would be helpful on what these internal constraints are and on the role of domestic reforms in enhancing competitiveness, particularly in terms of facilitating FDI, expanding capacity, investing in skilling, R&D, infrastructure, technology, logistics. These issues are mentioned, but I think a bit more prioritization on the domestic part might be useful. The paper, paper could address more explicitly the relative importance of domestic versus external challenges. To what extent is the lack of competitiveness and value chain integration domestic? To what extent is it intra-regional? To what extent is it extra-regional? Because there are many levels of challenges and are they all equally important or is there a relative significance at different levels of challenges? Because that will help countries prioritize their strategies accordingly. So I thought that maybe some reflection on this point would help the paper. Uh, there are also some related domestic issues which could be fleshed out further. One of these is the need for technology upgradation and productivity improvements. Uh, so specific segments within the industry where this is most required, how it could be done and how feasible is it given the predominance of MSMEs in this industry in the region and the fact that they face a lot of technological, financial and capacity constraints. So just the realism of technology upgradation and productivity improvements given the market structure. Uh, a related issue is about the market structure itself because I think uh, it is mentioned, but perhaps this needs more discussion as to the prevalence of the small small scale units. You've talked about family enterprises. So what's the mix of large versus small units and how does the operating structure pose challenges? For instance, if you look at studies for India, they indicate that MSMEs have not been able to take advantage of trade liberalization because of the constraints they face. So some reflection is needed on the extent to which integration or regional production networks getting into those is at all possible given the market structure. Or would it imply the need to facilitate linkages between small scale producers and larger domestic firms and MNC chains to enable the value chain integration? So given the market environment, how exactly would this integration happen because of the predominance of small players? Another area where I think detailing would help and the first discussant talked about it, Mr. Chanchal, is about the role of NTMs. Some examples of exactly how these are distorting trade and efficiency and how their liberalization would actually enable value chain integration would be helpful. What is the incidence of these measures? Are they NTMs or NTBs? Uh, another point is about the link between ICT and technology adoption and competitiveness. So how important is it to be part of digital platforms and e-commerce based trade? If we could have some statistics on the growing importance of e-commerce in this industry and how countries like Vietnam are placed in this regard, how much of an edge do they have over South Asian countries? Uh, I think in this context, a very important indicator is the e-commerce readiness index more than the traditional ICT adoption and traditional mobile internet sort of indicators. So are there best practices from what I know about that region is China is very high in the e-commerce readiness, but a lot of the Southeast Asian countries are not. So what is the practice there which enables enterprises in that part of the world to actually be much more e-commerce ready compared to the enterprises here? And what are the best practices we could learn? This is another area. Uh, a very interesting insight is about the declining share of women in employment in this industry and how this might be actually aggravated by the you know, technology upgradation and use of e-commerce. Uh, so again, what specific steps could the governments take to address this, especially in light of these sort of developments that are going to create more challenges in future? Then there's the issue of branding and marketing, which has been mentioned, but maybe further detailing of the nature of buyer networks, the role of major sourcing companies and retail chains, the possibilities of tie-ups between smaller enterprises and large brands could be discussed. Uh, another thing uh, that came to my mind is how linked is this issue with the country's FDI policies in distribution services and also their e-commerce policies. Um, the paper also mentions about servicification of manufacturing. It's actually an interesting thing to look at how important this phenomenon is in textiles. Uh, for instance, what's the role of R&D, logistics, distribution, branding, marketing, IT in textile exports? Are there niches where the South Asian countries might have an edge in terms of integrating services in manufacturing value chains? So maybe one could look at the OECD TBR database to get the services component of this industry's production and exports. Uh, and also 
because regional value chains involve many activities like design, production, marketing, after sales, customer support. It's not just about the traditional import export supply linkages. Uh, maybe one could look at these other niche areas for serviceification opportunities. Um, also a point that was made by the previous speaker, which is about the last paragraph. It mentions that regional suppliers should make a collective effort post COVID to jointly monitor trends, not undercut each other. Uh, of course, this seems unlikely given that they are competitors in many segments and because of the business losses they faced post COVID. Uh, but are there institutional mechanisms to enable such collective action? Could industry chambers or large companies with operations in the region play a role? So some reflection on this suggestion would be helpful. One minor point on this paper relates to the table on competitiveness scores. Uh, of course, most readers would widely understand these uh, scores, but it may help to provide a note just indicating the scale, what is meant by a higher or lower score and the number of countries just to get some context. Um, on the paper by Dinesh Kumar, uh, it's another very excellent paper. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about trends in individual countries, shares in global trade and trends in intra-regional trade. Maybe some discussion of the significance of these trends, the most salient features and any particular reasons perhaps for observed trends in terms of domestic policy changes or external factors might make the discussion of the trends more insightful. Um, the role of domestic demand has been highlighted. I think this is very important, but the discussion of the implications of trends in domestic demand for imports, exportable surplus and regional pr trade prospects could perhaps be fleshed out and the link between domestic demand and the methodology that is given, the CTB methodology could be made more explicit. Uh, there's the issue of input tariffs, sensitive list and NTMs which has been raised. So again, some reflection on the scope to reduce these barriers to existing or prospective regional agreements. I also have a broader question about whether greater integration within South Asia in textile trade can actually help in building resilience and mitigating supply and demand side shocks. I'm not convinced about it. Uh, would RVC integration in the region or with Southeast Asia be more beneficial from an efficiency, cost and welfare point of view? Why not be more dependent on third countries outside the region which are more competitive? Also, if intra-regional trade is to be boosted, how much of a role would regional or bilateral measures as opposed to domestic reforms and unilateral measures play? Again, similar to what I said for the first paper, some sort of uh, relative significance or importance of the measures and the challenges would be helpful. Finally, uh, while the importance of issues like cross-border facilitation, standardization, connectivity have been talked about and they're well recognized, the importance of soft issues such as movement of business persons, political will, business community linkages, opening up of bank branches to enable financial transfers, and the role of industry chambers could also be mentioned. Uh, some concrete suggestions on fostering agglomeration could also be added. So overall, I think these papers provide a very useful perspective about the current status and impediments. The points and observation may, uh, may be just taken as constructive inputs. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa. Thank you uh, for uh, all the time which you took in going through the PPTs, uh, reports and pointed suggestions definitely uh, we'll try to uh, make the most of it uh, from your inputs uh, thank you very much uh, let me now uh, call upon the next panelist dr ajay sahai he is a director general uh, and ceo of federation of indian exporters organization uh, he has decades of experience in the field of international trade and development policy and he has also been uh, policy maker for ages. So, uh, Ajay, you have the floor, please. Ajay also Thank represents you, uh, uh, a, a private sector perspective. So, like what we heard, uh, um, uh, one private sector perspective coming in from Arshad. Uh, this will be perhaps uh, another enriching uh, uh, experience from Indian uh, private sector. Yes, Ajay, sorry. Thank you, Rajan, for giving me this opportunity. Let me first thank the presenter for making a very comprehensive presentation. And my job has been made quite simpler by the previous panelists who have already raised a large number of issues. Uh, I personally feel that such detailed and analytical study should not be confined to the realm of academics. The objective should be that the trade and industry should optimally use the findings. As a head of the export organization, I was looking at much granular findings. My suggestion would be rather than basing them at the sixth digit of which 
data is readily available data is homogenized we should rather look into the import trends of the 10 top importing countries which obviously will account for over 75% of the trade our studies if they happens at the 8 or 10 or at whatever larger digit at which the import is happening i think a clear picture will emerge when we are looking at the data at six digit it at times give quite misleading information a country is looking at the data at six digit a he may be exporting a1 product the trend in the a1 may be otherwise than the product a so at the six digit when we are looking into data from the commercial point of view and when from the business point of view uh, i am personally of the view it is not giving me a clear picture we at times look into the these data from the importing countries perspective we match them at the eight digit depending on the description of the product and that help us to get the clear picture from the trade perspective secondly i think uh, uh, i was little uh, disappointed by not seeing something on the technical textile in the report i am personally of the view that this is an area where global trade is growing at a very faster pace it has already crossed around 170 billion dollar uh, it is growing at a compound annual growth rate of 6% in countries like india also uh, we are seeing it's growing at around 12% india has started off late uh, in this area we were not producing any ppe then within 60 days time we became the second largest producer of ppe today we are exporting around 4.5 lakh ppe every day and on 1.5 crude mask every day uh, the covid kind of uh, development has given further spur to the demand for the technical textile with any case is growing because of the various uses and i personally feel that there should be some approach on technical textile more so in the context of global value chain because in technical textile most of the input or large amount of inputs are still imported thirdly i feel that uh, uh, the report which recognizes to some extent that import content of india's textile export and more so for others also is increasing at a faster pace for example uh, roughly 15 years down the line 2003 2004 the import content in indian textile export was around 13% today it is close to 25% that also underlines the fact that that means backward integration in textile is not very effective uh, i am personally of the view that this is something where we need to look into not only in the context of india where of course for man made fiber we are to a large extent dependent on imports but also to many countries in south asia who even for the cotton are dependent on that uh, one reference has come for the declining share of women in the textile trade i think uh, the reason lies in the fact that in the textile industry over a period of time low skilled jobs are declining high skilled jobs are increasing and therefore women generally who joins the jobs the particular job for a very short period of time they are at the probably the low skilling area where the jobs are declining and that also speaks to some extent to the the declining trend of the the, the declining gender bias also i also feel that as an export organization which has to keep tune with the global development one need to look into the recent restriction which has come on the xinjiang province which contribute to roughly 80% of the cotton production in china and roughly 75% of cotton is converted there 75% of fabric is exported uh, how will be the scenario emerging when many of the countries in south asia also who are dependent on let us say raw cotton or cotton yarn or cotton fabric supply from china because first of all it will create a problem of tracing for them and these countries will be more reluctant to import any of these materials what will be its impact on uh, other sun countries of south asia for example india whether india will be exporting more of the raw material maybe raw cotton or cotton yarn to south asian countries or there will be other somebody country who will chip into is something which needs to look into and finally when i am talking about the global value chain i think we should recognize that the textile value chain is a driver buyer driven value chain where lead firm are the buyer in developed countries these resource textile house plays the role of coordination in the global apparel space they coordinate with the local industry in developing countries on the one hand and interface with the final consumer on the other hand 
most value in the apparel sector particularly is added the planning and retail end associated with control of key function like branding designing marketing which are highly knowledge intensive so when we are talking about the global value chain i think these aspects also needs to be looked into these are in short my comment on this report thank you ajay thank you very much for giving these insights which are more practical and pragmatic i am sure uh, uh, our presenters have uh, taken note of uh, uh, the 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 points which you have made and uh, we will definitely will look into how best we can integrate into these reports thank you very much you now let me go to the next panel uh, he is dr pushp sharma he is executive director of uh, saudi uh, which is a think tank in in nepal he has done ma in international studies from university and denver and holds a phd in public policy from crawford school of public policy australian national university uh, pushp bhai you have the floor please Thank you, Rajan Ji. Uh, thank you uh, for having me as a panelist in this very interesting and important discussion. Uh, first of all, congratulations to the authors of both the studies. I think uh, they are quite comprehensive in terms of covering the various issues related to textile and garments, and this sector, particularly in the context of uh, three South Asian LDCs graduation, uh, which are going to lose, you know, preferences. Uh, in some uh, mainly in the European countries uh, and also in the context that uh, many of the uh, uh, firms uh, that are engaged in textiles and garments, uh, uh, particularly in Nepal, and I hope uh, it's uh, true in some cases in other South Asian countries as well, uh, are uh, where women are engaged a lot. And uh, also uh, uh, the, uh, the size of firms are small. They are mainly small and medium enterprises. So in this context, uh, in, the, in, in terms of uh, what's coming up uh, as a threat, uh, having these studies is really uh, wonderful. Uh, many of the things actually have already been uh, said uh, earlier by earlier speakers. A few of my observations that I want to put over here. The first one, uh, very, uh, I mean, to begin with, I think in uh, Professor Rahman and uh, uh, Mazam's uh, presentation, or say the paper, Although it talks about uh, you know the threats and opportunities, uh, I think uh, the paper is more on threats and less so about the opportunities uh, that 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 uh, uh, South Asian textile and garment industry has. Uh, so of course, like we can read between the lines about what opportunities can be there, but if uh, those could be you know stated up front in the same way as the threats have been discussed, then perhaps uh, the paper will do justice to the title itself. Uh, that was one broad observation that I have uh, in, in terms of uh, the paper. Uh, also, uh, I was uh, of the view that, uh, say, you know, but there are some challenges that the paper has identified in terms of uh, the uh, textile and garment sector in South Asia, uh, one of which uh, is e-commerce also as a challenge because of the uh, low level of ICT adoption and many other factors, which is in a way is true. But can e-commerce also be taken as an opportunity in the in in uh, in the you know uh, in this uh, age of e-commerce where many countries are now going for this? Perhaps not in terms of the bulk uh, trade of uh, uh, textile and garments, but where some firms are focusing on some of the niche products, and that is, I think, an area where South Asia also can look at. And perhaps Nepal is doing that after the expiry of the MFA, when Nepal's uh, garment sector went down drastically. And now uh, we are seeing, uh, you know, some sort of a revival, not in the way that it used to be earlier when, when the MFA was there, but now the focus has been on quality and some of the niche items. So where countries are focusing on these kinds of niche items, perhaps e-commerce itself can be an opportunity. So that is something perhaps the paper also might want to, uh, you know, highlight rather than only saying it as a challenge, but that it can also be an opportunity. Another observation that I, that I had in terms of Dr. Kumar's paper, uh, Dr. Kumar has actually yes, highlighted that many of the South Asian countries are importing inputs from outside the region. Although there is possibility, there are prospects of these inputs being imported from inside the region, the, uh, you know, many countries are doing it from the outside. But why is this the case? Perhaps there's some sort of an anal analysis about the reasons of this happening would be fruitful because I think businesses are very clever, right? If they are having, you know, 
uh, inputs within the region at a lower cost, then perhaps they might not want to go outside. So what are the factors that are actually, uh, you know, uh, the reasons for these high import of inputs from outside the region than from inside? If we can delve into that, perhaps then that will help us look into those challenges and then provide recommendations in terms of how these can be sourced from within uh, the region. So one example I think uh, that we can have from Nepal is, for example, when we talk about Nepal's textile and garment export, carpets are one of the major items, right? That, that, are, that are classified as textile say. And for carpets, there are some special inputs that uh, the you know, industry needs. Say for example, wool, which Nepal imports mainly from New Zealand and also some of the items it imports from Peru. Are some of these inputs available within the region? If we go into some of the granular details, then perhaps we'll be able to look into the specific kind of uh, challenges and problems and then identify uh, the solutions. That This also leads me to another observation on the NTBs. Actually, this has been already said earlier by earlier speakers that only having numbers and NTBs will not help. I think we have to go into the specifics of what the NTBs are. And to do that, perhaps it would be easier, it, sorry, it would be helpful, I think, to look into country-specific and product-specific uh, NTMs and NTBs. So if there are really some NTBs, uh, uh, which are country specific and product product specific, then perhaps the policy recommendation will also be concrete rather than just having some some numbers. Uh, one uh, uh, example again that comes from Nepal is Nepal has been actually you know uh, uh, its 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 uh, capacity in terms of uh, you know, producing yarn and exporting yarn is being developed over the years now. But the major uh, uh, export of Nepal's yarn is in India, within the region, and to Turkey. Nepal, say, uh, the, when we uh, talk to the private sector people, the yarn producers in Nepal, they say that uh, they have prospect, they, they, they can uh, export this yarn to Bangladesh as well. Bangladesh being a, a huge garment uh, exporter, uh, producer, uh, there is prospect of exporting this yarn to Bangladesh. But the issue is, this yarn is not being, uh, uh, Nepal is not allowed to export this yarn from its land border from the full body Bangalaban border. And if it has to export through the sea route, then that becomes expensive. And there are other issues if it, if it has to export this from the, I think the Petropol land border, which is allowed. So there are these kinds of, you know, uh, country specific, product specific issues that perhaps we need to identify in terms of providing some specific uh, recommendations. And uh, finally, uh, let, also in terms of the interest of time, I'll not go into other details of both the papers which I have gone through. Uh, in terms of the recommendations in Professor Rahman and Konda uh, in, in, in Moazm's paper, uh, one observation that I had is actually, you know, the recommendations that we have over there are really very interesting, but I think there are also some trade-offs, right? So for example, one of the recommendations over there is that now, because it's the age of 4IR, so in terms of process upgrading and other things, we have to adopt these kinds of technologies. Now, when we are going to adopt these kinds of technologies, the first thing is how ready we are in terms of the adoption, the other thing is, if we are ready in terms of the adoption of, of these technologies, what happens to the trade-off in terms of the employment of labor, right? Because we cannot look at the uh, uh, textile garment sector in isolation when we are providing some policy recommendations. So there are some trade-offs of this kind. Similar, uh, you know, issues with compliance with labor standards. Now, when we are, I mean, as we become developing country, and we will be more pressed in terms of those compliance of labor standards, health and safety issues that necessarily is going to raise the cost. So how, we, how are we going to reduce the cost in terms of those compliance are something I think that the paper might want to elaborate a little on so that the policy recommendations become a little more specific. I know, I mean, also as a researcher, it's difficult to, you know, have all these things. And as one of the earlier speakers said that going into a digital level, there are constraints in terms of doing all that. But I think whatever is possible, I think uh, uh, if, if there is scope, uh, perhaps uh, you could take these recommendations. Uh, once again, congratulations and thank you for having me here. Thank you. Over to you, Rajanji. Thank you. Thank you, Pushpaji. Thank you very much for your input. Some of all you very valid and uh, uh, good to have you uh, with us always. Uh, I'm sure uh, we'll have comments coming in from the authors at the, before uh, we, we end up the session. Uh, so let me now invite uh, uh, Mr. Janaka Vijayasiri, he is a trade policy expert. Uh, Janaka is a consultant with over 20 years of work experience in trade and trade policy. 
uh, from Sri Lanka. Uh, previously, he was in Institute of Policy Studies. He has uh, specialization in uh, multilateral negotiations for the WTO and an issue relating to textile and garment, tea, etc. Uh, he's also a PhD in international trade from Monash, uh, Australia. So, Janaka, you have the uh, floor. Thanks. Um, can can everyone hear me? Uh, yes, but we can't see yeah, you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid I can't switch on my uh, camera because my connection isn't that great. So, uh, if, if I may, I'll just uh, speak. Okay, okay. Yeah, right. Um, so, uh, as uh, as it has been echoed by, uh, I think, the, the rest of the panelists, I mean, uh, the two papers are very comprehensive in its coverage of issues at hand, uh, both the current context of the textiles and garment industry in the region, looking at the opportunities, challenges, and also how best the region could uh, promote uh, regional integration uh, with the leveraging the textile and garment uh, industry in, uh, in South Asia. Um, right. Um, in terms of my comments, I've gone through both uh, papers, and uh, obviously I won't be able to cover uh, all the comments uh, that I've observed, but uh, for today's uh, panel, I would just uh, run through some of the main ones that I've picked up on. But after the meeting, I'll be happy to share the both papers with track changes uh, so that uh, uh, the authors could consider taking them, uh, the, the, the sort of my observations, particularly on Sri Lanka on board. Um, one one issue that I uh, would, would struck me uh, I was, while I was reading both uh, studies uh, was the fact that, I mean, uh, given that uh, these papers are quite detailed, uh, I believe like, uh, you know, when it goes to the policymakers, I think it would be good to have an executive summary at the start of the report uh, so that it really gives uh, uh, like a concise sort of uh, takeaways of what the report findings are. Uh, I think this is particularly important uh, given that policymakers, at least in Sri Lanka's case, uh, do not have the time to go through 60 pages of a report. So I would uh, sort of suggest uh, maybe for the authors to consider this uh, as a suggestion. Um, another issue that I uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, observed was this is more from having moved from research to uh, donor support is that like you know in the introduction it is uh, always good to highlight what the in objective of the paper is beyond the immediate objectives of the paper and what the next steps are and who are the beneficiaries of the uh, study uh, I, I, um, I believe that some of these issues were touched on today's panel but i think if those uh, 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 issues are touched upon the introduction it would really give uh, a good uh, sort of uh, lens for the reader to read the uh, reports with. Um, in terms of methodology, um, uh, both studies obviously have made extensive references to secondary information, but I, I also felt that it, it would have benefited uh, with, through some primary data collection, maybe key informant interviews with industrials in the region, sort of to validate and complement the sort of findings that you have got through your secondary data analysis. And I think today we had a number of industrialists uh, sort of speaking uh, beyond the numbers. And I think uh, by incorporating today's discussion into the paper, I think that would really sort of strengthen the analysis going beyond the uh, analysis, going beyond the numbers, I think. Uh, right, uh, certain, it's, okay, uh, the following are some general uh, comments. I think uh, 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 I know it's very difficult to sort of give give very country specific analysis uh, when you are sort of uh, uh, when both uh, studies are you know dealing with South Asian issues. You know you have to cover all seven countries. Uh, but I, I feel that uh, you know some of my comments that I'll be offering would sort of help at least bring some nuanced information analysis with respect to Sri Lanka. Uh, because uh, obviously, you know, no country in the region is similar. Obviously, we have a lot of similarities, but also we have a lot of differences. And I think these can be captured better in, in both papers. Uh, for example, I would uh, draw, for example, draw the attention to uh, Professor Mustafi Sirus and Mozam's paper, like, for example, on page six, where, you know, they refer to a study by Chowdhury 2020, where, you know, although FDI, uh, although the textiles and garment industry allows for 100% FDI, 
but you know in terms of foreign direct investments into the sector has been somewhat limited uh, which may be the case in other countries in the region but like if you look at the genesis of how the industry emerged in sri lanka it was very much driven by the foreign direct investments but over the years increasingly the uh, uh, the investment uh, subsequent investments came from uh, the locals but initially in the 1970s when sri lanka opened the economy much of the investment flows came from foreigners who who sort of uh, pumped money into sri lanka and established these in uh, the, the textiles and rather the apparel industry in sri lanka another uh, example of i think where you know uh, i would like to highlight how sri lanka might be different is you know on page 10 of professor mustafisus and mozam's study you know uh, they refer to this study by anderson you know where uh, it, it says that in in south asian uh, tng sector you know we are somewhat lagging in terms of social and environment com compliances but uh, i really can't comment on the experiences of other countries but like if you look at sri lanka's case and uh, you know, it, it is somewhat different uh, uh, given that Sri Lanka has a relatively good track record in terms of social and environment compliances. You know, uh, actually the industry have, in, industrialists have sort of taken this and leveraged it to our advantage to try to set ourselves apart from the competition from the region uh, by, by sort of hinging on the compliances that Sri Lanka has with regard to social and environment uh, sort of uh, uh, conventions and ILO conventions. And, and, and they have been doing that since 2000 uh, under the slogan of garments without guilt. You know, so they have come up with a tagline to separate ourselves from the competition uh, by using social and environment compliances. Uh, another issue that I found with the, uh, the, the paper one uh, CPD was that I was a bit confused, like, you know, Section 3 reviews the challenges in South Asia, but we revisit that in Section 7. So it seemed somewhat repeating the similar information. So maybe there, there might be some way of uh, better integrating the two uh, because it, when one, when I was reading it uh, from start to end, I just felt, you know, there was repetition of information in Section 3 and 7. Uh, uh, also in section three, uh, they talk, uh, the CPD paper talks about the emerging challenges and threats that are confronting the uh, TNG sector in South Asia. Uh, and to this list, I would also add, like in the case of Sri Lanka, you know, just as uh, graduation of LDCs is going to be a problem for Nepal, it will be, uh, uh, will be a prop, uh, issue for Bangladesh and so on. You know, in the case of Sri Lanka, we have been, ha uh, we have been recipient of the GSP plus uh, uh since uh since 2018 well we had it we got it twice actually we got it in 2004 and we lost it in 2010 and then it was reinstated in 2018 and now uh there's a lot of debate and concerns of uh sri lanka possibly losing the gsp plus so um in terms of the challenge i think uh, uh this can be added to sri lanka just as the graduation is uh, a challenge for the ldcs Another challenge which I didn't see in the case of uh, uh, Sri Lanka was the uh, lack of skilled labor. This, this is the lack of labor obviously is an issue which uh, uh, is a challenge right across uh, Sri Lanka, uh, not only the uh, textiles and garment industry, but uh, you know, uh, uh, this has been, uh, you know, whenever I speak to industrialists, this has constantly been an issue for them to find people with right skill because there's a lot of turnover in the industry, uh, given that um, much of the uh, laborers who participate are, are female and, 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 and they do not uh, remain in the industry for a long time. Uh, so uh, lack of finding uh, skilled labor is a challenge for Sri Lanka and it has constantly been a challenge, I think, from the inception of the industry. Uh, it also talks about, I think, uh, CPD uh, paper talks about challenges in terms of diversification. But I think in, in the case of Sri Lanka, like back in 2000, before we before the phase out of the MFA, you know, the industry made a conscious decision to specialize on few products. They didn't want to produce a wide variety of goods because uh, we are Sri Lanka being a high cost producer. We are not able to uh, sort of uh, compete on cost. 
So uh, the industry realized early on that we can't, you know, produce a lot of goods and diversify. It's rather better to look at four product uh, uh, lines. And that's what the industry has been doing. They have been focusing on uh, 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 on a limited number of uh, product lines in the apparel sector. So in terms of when it comes to diversification in Sri Lanka, I think the problem for Sri Lanka is diversification in the sense that the country is very dependent on the apparel sector and has not diversified away from apparel sector. But it's not a question of diversification within the apparel sector because that's not the strategy what the industrialists have been following. Um, another issue in terms of challenges, you know, uh, it talks about the rise of e-commerce and digital platform. And, and from my understanding, uh, in the case of Sri Lanka, I don't think that uh, I don't think the challenge is the rise of e-commerce per se, but rather the introduction of digital technologies, which which I think can lead to possibilities of deindustrialization and also reshoring of the industries closer to the markets in the West, for example, which has been a concern about automation, about introduction of robotics, artificial intelligence. You know that has been happening in Sri Lanka to some extent, uh, but. Uh, uh, it's not it's not e-commerce platform per se, which is an issue for Sri Lanka, because if you look at Sri Lanka's apparel exports, you know, uh, they are not so we the apparel exporters do not sell goods directly to consumers. You know, they are most almost all of the apparel exporters that Sri Lanka produce are produced under international brand names uh, and much of it is from uh, is conducted on B2B basis, not B2C. So e-commerce per se is, is, is not a challenge, but I think the challenge for Sri Lanka is the automation uh, of the industry and the implications of that. Uh, it can be both positive and sort of negative. Um, I also observed uh, in the CPD paper that for some reason, we're better to check uh, the table 13, the, in the numbers for Sri Lanka and Pakistan are similar. So there might have been uh, uh, sort of, uh, 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 better to check the numbers because they, they are a repeat of uh, the numbers for Pakistan and Sri Lanka are the same. Um, obviously, in both papers, they, they talk about the import emergent, emergence of uh, like uh, countries in Southeast Asia who are competing with South Asian countries um, and also prominently mentions Vietnam. And I think uh, 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 in neither of the paper, uh, uh, Maybe I did miss, but there was no mention of how, you know, more recently in the last two years, because of the trade war between the US and China, that has really sort of helped Vietnam in getting a lot of the investments which were moving out of China. Anyway, there has been a movement of investments out, out of China for a while, but the, the trade war and the COVID kind of accelerated the process. And, and, and one of the beneficiaries of this sort of uh, 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 a shift of investments have been Vietnam. Uh, so I think it's it's important when you talk about Vietnam and its growing importance in the apparel sector, you need to also mention, uh, apart from COVID, the US-China uh, trade war. Um, the CPD paper also mentioned, talks about bilateral and regional trade agreements in South Asia, and obviously it mentions you know, the Indo Lanka Free Trade Agreement, but it also referenced the ETCA, which is Economic Technical Cooperation Agreement. But uh, as some of you know, this is this agreement is still, it has it's nowhere near completion. So I, I think uh, it, it needs to be corrected because it says the Indo Lanka Free Trade Agreement was later graduated to the ETC, but that has not happened yet. And also, uh, I, I didn't see the mention of the Pakistan uh, Sri Lanka FTA agreement as one of the bilaterals in, in, in the paper. Um, right, um, quickly moving on uh, to uh, some brief comments with the, on the paper by Mr. D uh, Dinesh uh, uh, on the value chains. Um, I, I think uh, this is just a minor point, but uh, I, I found it a bit, uh, uh, you keep referring to South Asia as SAFTA, but uh, as you know, SAFTA is a trade agreement, but obviously it should be SARC as opposed to SAFTA when you're referring to the region. Uh, uh, so. Just, just be mindful of that. Uh, uh, um, and also, you talk. Uh, there's a section where you talk about the direction of uh, trade, uh, how it has kind of shifted, how the uh, market uh, dependency of South Asian countries on on markets abroad have sort of reduced. And and you mentioned about Sri Lanka, how US and UK uh, uh, trade share has reduced. But I think uh, 
when we do analysis in Sri Lanka, we we don't uh, obviously uh, 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 we don't look we we take U.S. and EU uh, European countries as the group because at the moment we are beneficiaries of the uh, GSP plus. So if you actually look, if you look up all the uh, uh, European countries, you can see since 2000, the, the share of EU has increased at the expense of uh, the US. And that has been largely because we have benefited from the GSP plus uh, scheme since 2004 to 2010, and then from 2018 up to now. So just, just be aware that like uh, in, in uh, anal when we do analysis from Sri Lanka on the Texas and APRA sector, we normally lump EU, the EU as, as a region. Uh, 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 another small suggestion like for your consideration uh, is that- Janaka, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, can I intervene? Uh, if you can, uh, uh, just important points you can highlight okay, right. because we already crossed over, right? Yeah, thank you. Right. Yeah, uh, just uh, two more points. I think uh, this, this this was mentioned in the presentation. You know, uh, I think somewhere in the presentation, Dinesh, you said like Sri Lanka has a low tariff, MFN tariff rates, but then, you know, in Sri Lanka's case, there's a lot of higher tariffs, which, you know, distorts a real picture. If you look at the effective rates of protection, they're quite high. So uh, even though Sri Lanka on MFN basis might look very, uh, you know, low tariff rates, but if you look, if you add all these higher tariffs rates, it, 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 it really diverts the sort of picture. So just be aware of that, like, just don't look at tariff rates on a basis of MFN. You need to add on these higher tariffs in Sri Lanka's case. And I think that has been a problem, for example, I think when it comes to value chains, because at the moment the government is following an import substitution policy, you are trying to protect local industries. And I think that might go against fostering these value chains because you know uh, you can't uh, 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 in, you can't uh, promote regional value chains if you have these sort of inward-looking policies and you put bans and like restrictions, you know, which uh, they are doing it on the basis that we are facing a foreign exchange crisis, a balance of payment crisis, but. This is going to be very detrimental in terms of promoting any value chains, uh, uh, regardless whether it's regional or global. Um, yeah, uh, those are my few comments. I thought few more, but uh, I'll be happy to share my detailed comments on the paper which I've tracked, and and I'll be happy to share them through uh, Rajan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Janaka. Thank you for very important uh, points and um, uh, you know giving us insights about more closer to Sri Lankan uh, situations, uh, which are more pragmatic and practical. So thank you very much. Uh, we have overshoot the time which we planned, but from the other participants who are attending this meeting, if anybody wants to speak, we can have uh, a couple of questions, quick questions or comments for another three, four minutes, and then we go to the presenters for their comments. Anybody, if it is there who is desirous of speaking, uh, please uh, raise your hand uh, and then I'll uh, call you or else we will go to the presenters to answer. I don't see any hands raised. Okay. Anybody wants to speak? One second, who has raised the hand? Okay, yes, uh, Rinjan, uh, uh, welcome. Uh, please, you have the floor. Thank you and good evening from Bhutan. Um, let me first uh, congratulate all the speakers and panelists for a very comprehensive. I just wanted to echo uh, the same spirit what uh, one of the earlier uh, presenters has actually um, already highlighted on the NTN, the most effective and efficient way of having the specific for country-wide specific NTMs and also to identify the exportable products, which is actually hindering in the inter-regional trade would be much more beneficial, especially for Bhutan's case. We have been increasingly facing a lot of NTMs and NTBs despite of having, you know, a free trade agreement or preferential trade agreement between within the region and between the countries. So if those specific um, one or two, even if it is one or two exportable items, if that could be identified country-wise and the NTMs could be highlighted, I feel that it would be much more meaningful. Thank you. Thank you, Rinchen. Thank you very much. Uh, Rinchen is uh, 
uh, acting DG from uh, Department of Trade in Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs, Government of Bhutan. Thank you, Ranchan, for your inputs. Anybody else? Okay, so I, I don't see any uh, hands raised. So let me go to the presenters, back to them for uh, their comments. Uh, first, uh, uh, Dr. Dinesh, and then uh, uh, Dr. Khankar and uh, Mustafa is by. Dinesh, you have, uh, you don't need to answer to all the questions one by one. Uh, just a short comment in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the comments and suggestions. Uh, uh, they are uh, these. Uh, these are very well noted, and I will definitely uh, take it to home while updating uh, the study. As the more of the comments regarding uh, reasons and why that is happening, like uh, so, uh, like more of uh, uh, like uh, uh, the comments basically of, uh, on my paper, on my study is required uh, more research. So I will take into account that. This is what I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Mazam Tab, you want to? Um, in fact, uh, I would like to thank all the discussants and um, particularly they have uh, uh, take the pain for reading on the, on the both papers. That's uh, that I would like to at first uh, uh, like to appreciate uh, all the discussants despite their busy schedules. Uh, but uh, we have uh, hugely benefited of, of the comments that have been made uh, on, on, on the paper. Uh, particularly, one important uh, perspective that I found from the uh, from the uh, uh, discussion is that uh, everybody uh, uh, likes to know uh, more detail and specific uh, uh, issues to be uh, discussed, either whether uh, in terms of example or whether in terms of uh, uh, analysis. Uh, 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 we will try to accommodate uh, these kinds of a uh, discussion and uh, analysis as much as possible uh, based on the uh, evidence and the informations uh, are there. Um, uh, uh, in case one important issue regarding the NTB related issue have been uh, discussed quite much uh, from a number of uh, discussion as well as from the flow. Uh, this is also very uh, important to understand that uh, sometimes uh, uh, very neutral NTM are turned to be NTBs uh, for countries. So we have to actually uh, uh, take that into account that how we will, uh, we will actually distinguish uh, NTMs and NTBs. Uh, and there are also country specific examples. We already heard that uh, how the NTMs technical activities are also turns to be in NTBs. Uh, and Bangladesh is also experiencing such as like that Nepal and Bhutan uh, also. So we will definitely take that into account. And also uh, the, some of the um, uh, informational issue also uh, have been guided by some of the discussant, um, uh, inclusion of uh, uh, Park China FTA, inclusion of uh, Sri Lanka, uh, uh, Pakistan FTA related issues. Mm, uh, those are also we will take into account. Now, uh, particularly, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Ch Arupa Chada uh, for uh, for providing very insightful comments on uh, on uh, uh, SME related uh, enterprises uh, within the uh, TNG value chain and what would be their level of competitiveness uh, in the uh, in 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 the in the um, upcoming years uh, uh, with the uh, new changes and the new challenges. We will definitely. Uh, take that uh, into account, and uh, and we will more be more specific regarding our suggestion about uh, uh, regional um, uh, 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 FT and SEPA beyond the region, and uh, and in what form it could be it could facilitate uh, the regional countries um, and a, and FDI rules of origin and and other and skills development issues. We will also take that into account while we discuss um, uh, about that. I like to. Uh, uh, I'd like to request um, uh, Rajanji that uh, if uh, uh, Janaka shared his uh, comments, detailed comments, uh, that would be helpful uh, to uh, get uh, insight, uh, not only Sri Lanka's issues, but also some other issues as well. So if, uh, and I would like to also request others also, if you have any, uh, any references that is available to you 
uh, on any country specific issues on regional issues i would like to request you to share through rajanji or through directly to us so that we could enrich our papers thank you thank you mohazam sir uh, thank you uh, okay i think uh, mustafiz is not here uh, he has yes, he was sir, facing we, some yes yeah. uh anyhow uh, thank you uh, let me uh, extend my thanks to uh, to dinesh muazzam and mustafiz for their time for their presentation being patient with each of the panel in uh, taking note of what they have to comment i am also to thank all the panel i i don't want to summarize but we have i have also noted and we have noted uh, quite a few uh, good suggestions and that is the purpose of this expert group uh, getting from different dimensions researchers academicians government officials uh, sarc secretariat which gives the overall uh, uh, sarc perspective and from the private sector which is also very very useful and uh, that is the the benefit that is the advantage of having these expert group the small cohesive group but the 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 quality of the input which comes is really immense and i'm sure these inputs will uh, really elevate the quality and output of the paper which would be then easy for the policy makers and as dr ajay also said even for the private sector some good policy perspective Uh, ntvs nish uh, what kind of regional cooperation so we have all noted uh, and i have to again make a request to all the panel if uh, like janaka said we have shared these papers with you so uh, even if you want to still comment uh, please do so and send it to us uh, in in 2 to 3 days time uh, even general comments uh, and uh, uh, because i do understand uh giving you 5 minutes uh, uh, to speak or 7 minutes to speak does not do justice with your stature uh, or your knowledge it is not reflective of that so we would be grateful if you can send a few comments either in the uh, the documents or in track changes or through a separate mail and we'll pass it on to these authors uh, so thank you very much everybody uh, for your time for your interventions and for your insights thank you thank you thank you very much thank you rajan ji for uh, organizing this session very successfully uh, thank you thank you thank, thank you, you very much. much thank you thank you thanks thank, thank you, you. thank you thank you thank you we'll see we'll see each other soon yes, very yeah. soon soon <laughs> thanks rajan thank, thank you rupa thank you very much when do we meet ha ah. <laughs> everyone's hearing <laughs> Other okay you wait you wait okay. for a couple of okay. minutes let let it okay. be there rakesh ji aap zara rukiye ga rakesh ji are you there ha 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 theek hai so i you and rupa will will have a discussion short discussion ajun ji i am recording this meeting so uh, unko recording okay, band kar dijiye agree you close the recording okay just to say